all right good morning everybody back out here november 21st sunday i think um back out here we're out yesterday talk fishing did pretty good um hoping to have the same results today so we'll be heading a couple miles offshore hitting some wrecks and then uh yeah we'll see how the day goes we got a full boat today i got six clients coming on board which is my limit and uh and myself so should be a fun day um i'll get back with you guys when we get out to the spots and see how it goes all right see you out there all right how's it going everybody uh so like i said it's uh november 21st tog trip uh, we actually went out the day before this and did pretty well uh, but i didn't get a ton of footage this day as i mentioned there's six people on board so i was pretty busy uh cutting baits if you're, if you're familiar with tog fishing you, you know you tend to lose a lot of a lot of crabs so i was i was frequently pulling people's uh, rigs out and rebait uh, rebaiting them up so i didn't get a lot of footage of them actually catching fish this day but they did do pretty good uh, everybody got a lot of keepers came up with a lot of table fare um, so I'll be narrating here and there throughout this video, but other than that, just enjoy the footage. Let me give you a new bait. Things were big, man. They were huge. What, the rays? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're out here at the spot. Uh, like I said, we hit a couple wrecks. We did pretty good. You can already see some fish there in the bucket. Um, right. We're using the Minco to trolling motor to hold us in place using the spot lock. Uh, it was a nice day. It was only one or two foot seas. Uh, but we still ended up having a client in six. We headed back to the uh, inlet a little early prior to getting our limit, but they still did pretty well. Crucial. So every once in a while, lift your rod up and just make sure you're sitting on the bottom. Yeah. Sometimes that little extra movement too will get their attention, but you don't want to do it often. They yeah. like it sitting still. Let me give you a new bait. Yeah, it's like you hear me said uh, there, whether you're using jigs or conventional uh, setups, usually for top fishing, you're sitting the, the bait on the bottom there pretty yeah. still. You want to have no slack in the line. Um, really having your line nice and tight, your tip of your rod close to the water. Uh, but once in a while, you give it a little lift, make sure you're on the bottom, make sure you're not snagged in case you do hook up to a fish. And once in a while, you'll see that that little lift there will get the uh, the tog's attention to come over and pick it up. But for the most part, you're keeping your, your bait pretty still there on the bottom, even with the jigs. Which, so, all right, so watch, ready? Make sure we don't get tangled with your dad here. So I'm just watching this, okay? Like, focus on this as it goes down. A little bit of pressure with your finger. So we're only using about two or three ounces here of lead, um, and Kyle here was having a hard time feeling if he was on the bottom. He was letting a lot of slack out, and if you do that in top fishing, you're really not—you're going to have a hard time feeling the bite. Um, sometimes it could be real, real subtle bite. So I'm trying to show him here how to be able to tell when you're on the bottom and, and how to keep that slack out of the line there, and not let out an excess amount of line. Drop it real slow, and you'll feel it hit the bottom. Go real slow down. You feel it? So just keep it right there. No, I was just reeling it up and it was following it up. All right, so anytime you're using real live bait uh, fishing, yeah, blame uh, it could be pretty messy at times. So here you can see our, our primary bait, we use green crabs. And what I typically like to do is half them, as you can see me doing here. And then uh, usually I'll cut off the legs just so they can't get pulled off of the hook. Uh, but you could leave the, leave the, the legs on once in a while. But I found that if you cut the legs off, you're less likely to get your bait stolen. Um, and as you can see me holding up there, just a typical, uh, you know, normal conventional rig. Uh, lead on the bottom and then a hook, you know, six to 12 in, uh, inches above it. Yeah, like I said at the beginning of this video, as you can see, I'm baiting up hooks pretty frequently. Um, so I apologize you didn't get to see majority of these fish actually caught. Uh, you know, I was still kicking. busy running all over the boat, taking small fish off hooks, putting, you know, bleeding these out, putting them on ice, and then obviously baiting people's hooks up. So. Not a ton of footage of uh, us actually catching the fish, but regardless, um, hopefully you can still pull something from the video. Yeah, anytime my clients want to keep fish or if I'm keeping fish for myself, usually I'll bleed them out. So I just cut the gills, I'll throw them in the live well or a bucket like this and bleed them out. Um, getting the blood out really improves the quality of the meat uh, when you're playing it. So I, you know, I prefer to do that. So I, I'll, what I'll do is I'll bleed them out. Once they're, uh, you know, for the most part, blood out, I'll throw them on ice for the rest of the trip. I might bring that shark back up. And as you heard me say, they're bringing that shark up. Uh, about five minutes before that clip there, okay. we had a shark actually follow one of the client's tog baits all the way up to the surface. It was about four or five foot. I didn't get to see it, but he did. And uh, I saw it just as the tail was shooting back down to the bottom. It was pretty cool. Yeah. We heading in or what? We're going to go to the bay. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier in the video, even though it was pretty flat seas, we still had a client get sick. Um, you know, it happens sometimes, and if the consensus on the boat is they want to go back, 
uh, they paid for the trip, so you know, I'm happy to do that for them. So here we go to the inlet. It's not really a secret spot, so I'm not too worried about spot burning here. There's obviously a lot of boats, everybody knows it, but came back to the inlet, do some top fishing. You can see the Minkota there holding us in place, nice and close to the rocks. Definitely an advantage, so you don't have to throw your, your double anchors and, and get real close. Uh, you just use this spot lock and you can jog all around the, uh, the rock piles there to find the spot you want to be. But, um, you know, definitely more shorts uh, in this area than, you know, the keeper ratio. We were offshore, but either way, still having a good time. I think it was probably one keeper for every four or five uh, shorts that we catch. Let's work. Was your drag a little loose? Yeah, I tightened it up. Yeah, so all in all, it was a good day. Uh, they call most of their keepers offshore, but I think they got one or two here at the inlet. So, uh, short, but... you know, good day fishing. Everybody came home with table fare, had a good time, caught yeah, a lot of fish. Um, so overall, yeah, great trip. These guys are returning customers, so I appreciate you guys, Constantine Brothers, for coming on board again. <laughs> Looking forward to having you out the next time. Uh, if you guys like this video, please subscribe to the channel, like, and hit that bell notification so you can watch uh, any future content to come. Thanks.